Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential, I mean logarithmic equation. So we have log x plus y equals log x minus log y. Could we turn this into an exponential equation? Definitely, uh, we can also talk about that. I wasn't actually planning on talking about it, but we can do the following. Since we have logs on both sides, and I don't seem to have a formula for log x plus y, but I do have something for the right-hand side, right? It might make sense, right? So why don't we write it as 10 to the power log x plus y equals 10 to the power log x minus log y. Obviously, if two sides are equal, then 10 to the power both sides are also going to be equal to each other because... 10 to the power x as a function is going to be always increasing. Therefore, it is a bijection. All right? Cool. Now, what do we get from here? We get something nice. First of all, notice that we have a special formula for uh, logs, which is a to the power log with base a of b is the same as b. And if you wanted to prove that set it equal to x, log both sides with base e, base a, I mean, then you'll see that it's equal to b. So in this case, our base is 10. When it's not written, it's base 10, as you can see here. So uh, this basically means that 10 to the power log something, let's call that z, is equal to z. In this case, I have x plus y here and two logs. So here it might make sense if we split it up into 10 to the power log x divided by 10 to the power log y. I mean, you don't have to do it. You could directly go off of that, but uh, it's a little easier right now because we haven't used any properties logs except for this one. Anyways, so hopefully you get the idea. Now let's go ahead and simplify it from here. 10 to the power log x plus y is going to be x plus y. And what is 10 to the power log x? It is going to be x and 10 to the power log y is going to be y. So that is going to be our expression. So I wasn't, I wasn't planning on using 10, but it turns out to be a really nice way of approaching this. But let me go back and uh, stick with the original plan. So, so we have log, but you can see from here, if you do 10 to the power of both sides, you're going to be able to simplify it. Nice. I'm, I'm going to go through the solution. Uh, it's kind of interesting because this is uh, more like a general equation as opposed to like numerical values. We're not solving for just a single x, but x and y are going to be uh, dependent upon each other. All right. So I don't have a formula for log x plus y, but I do have a formula for log x minus log y. So if you have the difference of two logs, that can be written as the log of a quotient. One more time, the difference of two logs can be written as the log of a quotient. In other words, this can be written as log x over y, right? And now we can totally forget about this and equate these two things. If you equate those two things, what do you get? Log x plus y equals log x over y. And if you remove the logs, because again, log is an increasing function, just like 10 to the power x. So if log a equals log b, that always implies a equals b. Of course, this is true for real numbers with complex numbers. Complex, uh, uh, complex logarithms are very much different. And we used it in the previous video. Remember, we had 1 plus i to the power i, which was a very, very complex number, right? Okay, so we're going to stick with the real um, solutions here. So I have the equality of logs. This, this implies x plus y equals x over y as before. So it's a little easier. It seems to be a little easier using 10 as a base. Uh, but again, it just popped up, um, just occurred to me. And I'm glad that I was able to share that with you. So we have this uh, equation. What can I do with this? Absolutely uh, you can do lots of things, but one of the things that I can think of quickly is multiply both sides by y, which is uh, cross multiplication. So multiply both sides by y, y cancels out, you get xy plus y squared. I always write, uh, like to write things in alphabetical order. That's why I always write it at xy, not yx. I don't know, it just looks weird to me. 
And then we can put everything on the same side, like, okay, y squared plus xy minus x equals zero. And then we can solve this as a quadratic equation in y. And that's gonna give us the following. That's kind of interesting. Let me show you real quick, but then I'm gonna do something nicer than this. So as a quadratic um, in y, this can be written as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is x squared, minus 4ac, which is plus 4x. Awesome. What is that supposed to mean? This means that there are two solutions for y. In other words, there are two branches or two pieces for this graph. Is that a hyperbola? I don't know. You'll probably let me know. But anyways, if you use the positive, I'll tell you what it is at the end. Not the hyperbola or the, the type of conic, but um, general form. Anyways, so we get two solutions, which means that you're going to have two separate pieces. And if you graph these on Desmos, hopefully that's going to give you a nice graph. But there's actually a much, much nicer way to approach this problem. So let me go ahead and show you that approach, which you probably thought about. I'm pretty sure you guys are very smart. I know my audience is awesome. So now uh, let's uh, start, I don't know, maybe start with this. X plus Y equals x over y. So I kind of have to uh, roll it backwards and then start with this. So you're thinking like, okay, I turned this into a quadratic in y and that kind of seems to complicate things, don't you think? So why not go with the other variable, which is actually linear, right? If you consider uh, this equation in x, then uh, that's linear. So that's something very interesting about algebra that an equation can be linear or quadratic depending on how you look at it. So here's what I'm talking about. And some people are going to complain about it because I talk a lot, but I just want to explain things. And sometimes I get excited about something that I just find at the moment and I want to share with you. So hopefully you don't mind. Okay. And if you do, that, that's okay too. So anyways, uh, take out an X. I get one over Y minus one. And I can make a common denominator. Again, this doesn't look super duper good, but don't worry, we'll fix it. And then the hocus pocus abracadabra mathematics occurs. Multiply both sides by y, you get y squared equals this. And then divide and ta-da, you get x in terms of y in a much nicer form. And obviously, this is much, much nicer. And guess what? This is a rational function. Yes, this is a rational function, which usually has asymptotes, you know, so on and so forth. But what kind of asymptotes you can think of, by the way, this is X and Y are, are switching roles here. So you kind of have to uh, switch the roles on the coordinate plane and you'll see the graph. So here, uh, Y equals one is going to be an asymptote. I'd like to say it is normally horizontal, but in this case, I would go with vertical but this is vertical from an x equals f of y perspective so if you this is probably going to be turned out to be horizontal anyways but hopefully you get the idea so this uh, seems to be a vertical asymptote graphically and one thing that we never thought about and let me tell you that because i'm going to show you the graph of it right now and when you look at this graph this doesn't look like a rational function this looks more like a radical like y equals square root of x are you fooling us? No, no, no. Math is not going to fool you. I'm not trying to fool you either. This is not y equals square root of x. It is actually the function we talked about. But there's a caveat. And that is log function for reals must be well defined. So x is positive, y is positive. If that's the case, x plus y is also going to be positive. So we're good. So we can only stay in the first quadrant. You, you actually, if you graph this relation as like, I don't know, how, however you want to graph it, doesn't matter. But if you want to graph it like this with Desmos, you're going to see two pieces and this will continue like uh, probably something like this. But X and Y both have to be positive, which means we have to stay in the first quadrant. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. You got to do all three. Um, I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.